I want to introduce you to a man who spends four hours every Sunday spreading his gospel on the busiest street corner in Denver, Colorado. I plead with you to turn to Jesus Christ and build your house upon him. Build your life upon him because if you don't, you're going to end up destroyed in your sins and you're going to end up in hell. I should probably caution, he tends to be more of a doom and gloom type preacher. Do you understand what sin is, people? Sin is the transgression of God's law. It's fornication, uncleanness. As he got to fornication, I noticed no one was standing around him, and I thought I'd take this moment to find out what he thought of what I had been doing 14 hours before this moment. Do you take questions? 13. What's your question? Just would you consider group sex part of that? that what's, your, what's that? Would group sex fall under that? Would group sex also be yes. part of the sin? Yes. Why? Because uh, any sex outside of marriage is against God's will for you. Sex is supposed to be had inside of marriage with a male and a female, one. If your spouse is there, does it count? No, one, I said one person and one man and one woman. You can't blame a poly guy for trying. What Bible is that? 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. You're fornicating outside of the union of marriage. Jesus Christ said, uh, have you not read, uh, uh, God made them male and female. I will be fully transparent here with you, Orgy Story audience. This is not the first time someone in jean shorts has asked me if I read Corinthians. It is the first time they were also wearing a Yankee cap. I haven't in a long time. I disagree with its sentiment now. And the two shall become one flesh, not yeah, three. You read one. Corinthians about wearing different types of thread clothing? It doesn't say that in Corinthians. You have a hat and, oh, it's Leviticus, right? I'm not under the old covenant, and first of all, it says wool and linen. So am I a Jew under the old covenant? I don't think so, but you're no, taking so that the Corinthians pretty seriously. It doesn't apply to me, because I'm not a Jew under the old covenant. They were you living under direct theocracy under God. Cool. Thank you. I do so appreciate nice try. you taking my question. Nice try. Pretty simple. I'm going to hell and Corinthians should be a strict text interpretation, but I have a confession about the Leviticus jab. I theorized he might rebuke the Old Testament, and more specifically Leviticus, a majority of Christians do and have for a long time. The irony is that Christians have always thought the discovery of new covenants meant old texts needed to be reexamined, a sentiment we here at Orgy Story absolutely agree with. We present a new covenant in celebration of the orgy and the orgy goers. Orgies have been a silent scapegoat, allowing them to be demonized and propagandized. No more. Life is rarely as simple as heaven or hell, but if it is, you're going to hear exactly what got us sent there. Welcome to Orgy Story. A narrative-based podcast about hosting, attending, and destigmatizing orgies. On today's show, m- more destigmatization, really, than anything else. I'm Kevin. I was raised in a religious part of this lovely world, and I want to show you how problematic religion is on sex. We have three clips for you. The first, a very serious one about the Catholic Church and the sexual revolution. Second, a well-known tele-evangelist on the consequences of sexual sin. And third, a small-town preacher, really with a YouTube account, is his basic credentials. Now, if you're a person of faith and listening to this podcast, we know you can have both God's love and some freaky sex. We're on your side. Luckily for everyone, this isn't a sermon. This show is a conversation, and we want to hear your thoughts on today's topic, Orgy Haters. Find us, OrgyStoryCast at Gmail, or on Instagram, OrgyStory. Up first, the Catholic Church picked a fight with the wrong Orgy Podcast. 
The U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops says the social and sexual changes in the 1960s provoked the sex abuse scandal in the Catholic Church, not homosexuality, celibacy, or an all-male priesthood. But the organization acknowledges it didn't do enough to stop the abuse. This is the third study the church has ordered. It took researchers five years to finish and cost almost $2 million. The bishops were one of the main funders. Victim support groups are quick to criticize the findings. They're pointing fingers at the bishops who they say turned a blind eye. Bishops certainly knew that abusing a young child was illegal. Becky Iani says a priest abused her when she was a child living in Virginia. I feel like they're minimizing my own abuse. And I feel like they're minimizing by saying, well, it was what was going on in the 60s and 70s. Becky is among more than 15,700 people who have filed claims of abuse since 1950. But the church points out new cases of abuse dropped sharply in the 1990s. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Washington. Danielle Nottingham coming in hot with the Catholic Church. Here's why I'm playing this for you. This is one of my bullets, Kevin. What does this have to do with our show, Kevin? 60s and 70s culture is what gets blamed. The mm. sexual revolution that is a massive time during a feminist wave, a hey, gay people exist wave, a lesbianism to the thing. Civil rights. Sexual revolution goes with civil rights revolution. That is what they are blaming for. What is the most prolific sex scandal of the last few uh, ever. So, Kevin, tell me, does this mean that anything that happened prior to the 60s and 70s <laughs> is all good? It's all good. Nothing, nothing ever <laughs> happened with priests touching. Right, so you're already doing what I'm going to call pointing out flaws in the logic. Oh. I like where your notes are at. And it's going to be tough if I'm arguing for the church. I'll give it my best. Yeah. Yeah, be their PR <laughs> rep, Kevin. Oh, that would have been a tough one. I would have advised against that statement. <laughs> that I would have been like, is that what their that. two million dollars worth of research went into? So <laughs> I'm curious about the totals. I also wrote down two point zero. It was two point five million dollars. Five I put years, two, two mil, million. No, no, no. Five years, two million. That's where I got the five. So it took a long time. Took very little money over the course of five years. Was funded almost entirely by the bishops, and found out that the sexual revolution is what caused it. I also am making a pure causality argument. The 70s is the last time orgies were out and about in like an open thing. And it's just so crazy to me to imagine that being so taboo. And I feel very lucky that it's not so taboo at this point in our lives. It still is to a certain degree, but it's in the 70s, it's just like people like us expressing our sexualities for the first time and... That's so great, but it's really not that like out of the ordinary. I can't believe I know, how it, taboo it was. It feels was. like there are so many worse things than having orgies. Of exactly. What's well, a little group sex? I mean, this was you can hear the the direct argument against this comes out immediately, which is, hey, why are you blaming sexual revolution of the sixties and seventies on something that was going on before? Yeah, sorry, is since. pedophilia involved in the sexual revolution? Because that's something no one talks good about for a good reason. Point. No. It is absolutely one hundred percent not yes. and not a portion. You probably heard the are you under twenty one? We mean eighteen, maybe. Don't listen to this at all because we can't legally bar anyone eighteen. <laughs> but emotionally you should be twenty five. That's our rule. This is, to me, a direct attack at orgies. I might have been taking it too personally. I think it's a way worse attack at the people actually implicated. But the argument I'm making is this is one of the most popular religions in the world. You can hear the way they still use. And there is a historical argument. You've heard me talk about the book I've been reading about the history of orgies. It's something that's always happened. Anytime there is a massive scandal or a, a, the goal is to propagandize a different community they point to this type of thing mm -hmm. yeah, hey it's a these scapegoat of and orgies are the easiest one in history it's happening and this was like six months ago is the cbs report yeah, part, this is right here part of the daily types of uh, things that type the the types of things that people hear on a daily basis that point them in that are messages to them over and over that lead them in the direction of believing that monogamy is the only answer. It's the only normal. It's, you know. It, okay. 
I do have a question. I'm curious. What would you have spent two million dollars on if not this report to tell you what's been causing all the systemic problems of cover up of sexual abuse in the church? I would probably get all the Pope's very consistent weekly, if not tri weekly therapy sex se- with a sex therapist to discuss what celibacy is doing for them and what it actually looks like and makes them feel Pope's like. Pope's bishops, yep. I'll tell you why I love that idea. First of all, advanced education is usually free in Europe. So called <laughs> arms. Hey, So is healthcare. Trained. Two, <laughs> that would be extremely helpful. I like how specific you're being. It was like, I mean, you could, you know, pay people back more than the thing you, lawsuit-wise, like you could... Maybe instead of like a True. study on why it's a problem, you could be like, how are we going to make amends for this massive problem? And that's an, such a, it's an amazing thing to consider Instead of spending well. $2 million to find a scapegoat. It's impressive, but it's not very helpful. It's like you could form an education fund with $2 million in trust and put some interest on it. Look, this is an orgy podcast, not a finance podcast. This is a hater of the week to me. This is a serious version. But the Catholic Church is clearly taking a shot at sexual rights and all I'm trying to point out is, like, I think people, if they take a step back from some of a lot of the things that they were exposed to, either younger, as children, in the media, it does help understand why you're like, why am I so jealous and crazy about this? Oh, F, it's because of this. Like, this is telling me I should be doing this, otherwise I'll skate into a different We're not path. telling you yeah. your religion is wrong. We're not telling you the beliefs that you hold are wrong. We're just saying maybe consider take things on a case by case basis. It, do you disagree with this one thing cuz that's okay. Yeah, it's always good to challenge your own ideas too. I always find. It's another orgy story commercial. 5 stars on iTunes. You know the drill here. You need to tell a friend If you're listening on Stitcher, excellent. Just rate it however is possible on Stitcher or follow on Spotify. Look, you get it. Orgy Story. Engage us on the social media. See you on Instagram. Next up, the four consequences of sexual sin. Uh, He forgot pregnancy and STDs, but note those. Uh, repeat your question, please. Is, is if this it's the recording. guy with the leather pants? Yep. <laughs> it's, it's definitely him. All right. All right. This is honestly, I think my friend, his name is Jenison Franklin, and this guy looks super bi curious to me. I'll let you The consequences so of sexual snappy. sin. <laughs> Number one, notice that he lost in sexual sin the loss of mission. The loss of mission. They put his eyes out. He no longer had vision. I promise you, if you continue in sexual sin, it's a matter of time before you lose your vision. Secondly, Samson lost... All right, I'm going to go ahead and step. Let's stop per consequence, because there's four total. (laughs) First of all, he said sexual sin, you'll lose your vision. Is that like the old adage that masturbating will make you blind? Yeah. Is that like where he's yes. getting this or from? Sick or something? Yeah, probably. Also, can I just say that sexual sin as a category turns me on so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting over here thinking about what my sexual sin is and I, I I'm like imagining all of my fantasies. I, I'm with you. I want to have a sexual sin themed orgy. Exactly. Well, like, can I say that again? I, I mean, didn't we all go to frat parties oh, like that it. were called angels and demons? <laughs> There is so much to unpack about the specificity of you're going to go blind if you go to sexual sin. He also conflates it. It started mission. It went to vision. Do you think he meant to do that or it was just. Do you think it's. Or he does. Regardless, Kevin, he needs to argument? clarify what the your vision is. Can I make an argument? Maybe he has participated in sexual sin. That's how he knows. He started talking about it. Got all hot and bothered. Lost vision couldn't see his notes let's really hope that that's where this I'm conversation curious, is maybe going but def- i don't think it is yeah, i'm curious to see if he'll define what unsexual sin is or what se- what sexual non-sin yeah, is and that curiosity is there a sex- he does not he stays super, <laughs> what's his vision he stays super 747 level i just want to know what his vision is if we could ask this man franklin 
what what is your sexual vision? Jenna's Listen, what do you friend. think that he would say? And, uh, well, I mean, well, let's just ask him what the second consequence God, is. Is this like a Shakespearean <laughs> implied metaphor? I'm curious. Better get mad. This is a big one. Sexual sin will cause you to lose and come to a place that you have a loss of common sense. Hadn't y'all seen that happen? Hadn't you seen people just starting to do things and you know, that, that, why? why? That, that, they're not even thinking. Four times, four times, four times, Delilah said, tell me your secret. And he told her a, a lie and said it was the secret, and every time he woke up, the Philistines were upon him, and he killed them, and he killed them, and he killed them, and he killed them. But when he really told the family secret, then suddenly the power had left. The point is this. I mean, at some point, tell me your secret, tell me your secret, and you see she's up to no good. Shouldn't you have some common sense? The loss of common sense... But sin causes you to lose a loss of mission, a loss of common sense. Only four of these. Is a loss of common sense. He's very specific about it. There's the Hey There Delilah song. And then he says, people just do things and they're just like, why? That is the argument. Do you feel like you've lost common sense? Because I think we all are participating in sexual sin. I can ask him. Yeah. Well, first of all, I need to freshen up on the Bible because I have no idea who Delilah is or <laughs> any of the references. <laughs> Me either. I don't know who Delilah is. I'm going to presume a man's been on the mic for a few hours at this point, <laughs> wherever he's been talking. I also like the collective, yeah, there was what so, he says. Oh my gosh, this is something that I wrote. I wrote people in audience, yeah, and then an arrow pointing to that that said, I wish I could speak to these people about their sex lives. What, what in their lives has happened? happen to make them think that <laughs> what he is saying is, is that sex causes a loss of common sense so basically these people are like yeah sex is fucked me up <laughs> sex is, i've lost all common sense it's meth he's explaining <laughs> meth <laughs> very accurately sex is a a human ac normal human activity not a drug this is okay? a well-watched video this guy's hating deep, and we're only two consequences in. There are four. He's about to relist them in case you got bored during that Delilah thing. What I keep asking myself, Kevin and Vicky, is what is his sin? What is his sexual sin? Like, what does he define as sexual sin? Because I guarantee you these are Christians who want to reproduce so that they can keep, you know, uh, generating more Christians they have sex. Yeah, because it could run the gamut from like premarital sex to group orgies to, you know, not doing it. Yeah, in I would really like to style. hear him like, I'm curious define what his sex. Spitballing, but how nice would be conception night at the church where we're going to watch the Millers fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just think it out loud orgy wise. It, obviously for adults only. A loss of fear. He should have been terrified. He should have been hitting the brakes, not gassing it. He's, he's, going, he's going faster and faster. That's how sin does. You know you ought to be stopping. You know you're not doing good. You know you're deteriorating physically. You know that you're going to be found out. You know things are closing in. You know it. And you, instead of putting the brakes on, you're gassing it. Yeah, Before he's like, he gets to the fourth fear. consequence, how horny did that last part make Exactly. You? Well, yeah. he sounded horny. Also, I'm going to say sex is good exercise. So if anything, deteriorating physically, it's like, no, you're just going to get a little more. <laughs> you're going to get the, your steps in. The <laughs> loss <laughs> of fear is like, I don't know, man. It's still deeply present. Maybe I just have anxiety. but. And lastly, the loss of God's favor. Whew. You know, sexual sin will cost you the loss of God's favor. All the success that you are having right now is God's favor on your life. You let that favor live. And the Bible said Samson woke up after he told her the secret and shook himself and said to himself, the Spirit of the Lord will come on me just like he has always. I've always had it. I've always got it. I'll always have it. And he went to fight. And when he did... In the middle of the fight, it dawned on him. He wished not the spirit of the Lord. Who says I have to do what Samson does? The favor of God. It didn't happen the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time. That is not God excusing your sin. It's his mercy. 
but there will come a time when continual sin, habitual sin in your life that the Holy Spirit has convicted you of will cost you the favor of God. So it's only small consequences, just to recap. Uh, and first of all, he said only if you have the judgment of the Holy Spirit. I don't think I've felt that yet. I've certainly felt the encouragement of it. The loss of mission or vision, maybe both. And let's just talk about the There's smoking like five, gun here. Five consequences. Let's just talk about the smoking gun here when he said that the Spirit of God has come on me and ha- will come on you. <laughs> Yes. This language is I so phallic. I mean, all this is doing is giving me more ideas for our next orgy for themes. <laughs> You're gonna come dressed like him. This guy likes to fuck. This guy likes to yeah. fuck. Yeah. Can we talk about how he said sexual sin as a phrase at least fifty times during all of those consequences? He really wants to talk about sexual sin. I'm gonna keep saying it. This guy's pants are way too tight for him not to want to be fucking someone right now. We should loss at least be sense. talking about that. Loss of fear, loss of God's favor. So no small consequence. And you know at least half the audience was like, What's sexual sin? Pastor Jennison? <laughs> like there's gotta <laughs> be it's like I used a plug, I masturbated, came all over my wife like the Holy Spirit. Was that okay? And At least I'm married. It was okay. <laughs> it is okay. Everything. Yes. Was she into it? <laughs> she, like, she slapped me. Did you ask she her? She told me Bo and told me to shut the fuck up. I came again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We threw this third one in because it's a real Halloween sermon that crosses some borders. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Perry Stone Ministries. This person just quit calling. And I say to my wife, have you heard from so-and-so? No, it's kind of weird. It's been a month. I said, what is going on? And so we would try to call. Never could get them in. Here's what happened. I want you to listen to me. What happened was the woman minister got so wounded emotionally by what happened to her daughter. She took it personal. That she had a family member that started taking her away for a week or two at a time just to get away from the press, the stress and the pressure of everything she was going through. But this family member went to a place in Tennessee where this woman, I'm talking about the woman minister, came in contact with a man who, uh, I I really don't know how it happened. I never did find out if it was at a restaurant, at a hotel, or it was somewhere where at a restaurant. And they got to talking to this man. And this man said to this preacher lady, this is the most amazing thing. This is the most remarkable thing. Listen to what he said. I went to a psychic about a few weeks ago, and the psychic said, you're going to meet a blonde-haired woman that's going to tell you about God. Stay with me now. Now, normally in her right condition, she'd have stood up and said, you're working through a familiar spirit and there's a demon behind you. And I don't know who you are, but go. So she instead gets seduced, are you listening? By a familiar spirit. Ends up with her relative giving her her phone so that when she calls this man, it's not traceable on her husband's bill. Come on, I'm preaching now. And husband for months doesn't even know what's going on. Oh, we're just going to take a trip. Oh, we're just going to take a trip. Well, she's taking a trip to go see this guy. One night, this husband, who is one of my closest friends, in fact, he's, oh, I won't, I won't go there. He's one of my closest friends. Not biased at all. He said to me, Perry, I was lying in the bed beside her, not knowing anything. And something came into our house. The, the alarm system was on, meaning if you got into my house, broke in. And he said, I heard, him, I heard somebody downstairs moving stuff. He said, chairs, table. And I, I knew where the kids were because we could see the kids' room right across from us. None of the kids were up. They don't get up and go downstairs. Everything they need is upstairs. And he said, I'm thinking, dear God, somebody's got in my house and the alarm didn't go on. I know I turned the alarm on. So he's got... You know, beside his drawer, he's got his angel in, made of lead metal. You'll understand that. If, you, if you're a member of the NRA or something, you'll understand what I'm saying. I'm going to throw a quick pause on Perry Stone Ministry from 2016 and collect thoughts from the gallery. Woo! Oh, I'm man. An angry turtle face right now because there's so many things that I'm offended by. And just I w- in that first. Oh, minute. yeah. 
I wish that uh, I could sit down with this man and have him point out where iPhones appear in the scripture <laughs> or um, uh, maybe <laughs> where ghost stories appear in the scripture in a way that he would you, like to recreate an, in sermon. You've really caught on to what's about to happen, too. He's about to shift into ghost story mode, but that's what he's implying. He's implying to catch everyone up. A woman preacher that's a friend of his, though, fuck, if you can follow the characters at this point, you're a better story listener I mean, than he's I not biased. We know this. It took me 12 times. He's like, a friend of mine, a good, my best friend, good friend of mine. My best his friend's wife, wife, sister's youngest daughter's uncle. You listening? You listening? I'm preaching I'm preaching now. now. Has, uh. has a security system, so he's like, don't think they don't have a security. It's like, you sound like you're fucking lying right now. Just as a heads up, you sound like a liar. <laughs> Like, they had a fucking Navy SEALs-proof security system. They had Simply Safe before it existed. He's And then he says he had his lead angel. You'll understand that if you remember the NRA or something. <laughs> his angel made of lead. Angel made of lead. Apparently, guns were also in the scripture. You'll understand this if you're from a southern state and Republican. He just, he's it sounds we. The, to me, like he wanted to do stand up comedy, and it was like, but I chose this. Yeah. I'm preaching now. And I'm not good at either of them. <laughs> but <I deserve. laughs> now, check this out. All of a sudden, now someone said, well, how can he see in the dark? Can you tell stories like this and people get, uh, because of windows crazy and lights outside, okay? <laughs> and people like, the, he cares not telling us a true story because how could he see in the dark? Because, well, anyway, <laughs> people just trip me out. And he felt something in the bed. Listen, he turned, and there's a man laying in the bed between him and his wife. And he, he got a look at his face. And when he went to reach, it was a spirit. And the spirit disappeared. And it freaked him out. And he, when his wife got up, he said, Who's this man I saw in the bed last night laying beside you? She said, What are you talking about? And he described this man in detail. And she just said, Well, I don't even know what you're talking about. You're just having hallucinations. And when she... Listen, got pregnant by the man and had to tell her husband he saw the guy and it was the man who was in the bed. The demon looked like him. This is getting deep. Now stay with me. Getting deep. She felt so hopeless. She's in ministry. She has a church. She's very anointed. She's pregnant with somebody else's baby. How can you get up and tell the congregation that? So she says, I might as well quit preaching. He said, no, you just come back, we'll figure it all out. And the man said to her, I've been married four times. I've never had a have child. You? That's my baby. You're going to have that baby because if you have that baby and try to leave me, the rest of your life where you preach, I'm going to go and sit out there and jump up and tell them you're a lying hypocrite. I'm going to go ahead and hit pause on Perry Stone Ministry. How are you feeling now? Even worse. Even worse? Do, Even does worse. Does it feel like a specific attack on procreative rights, the inability to understand how to use a prophylactic, even if you're a lady preacher, and a lot of steps in between? Oh. Feeling pretty misogynistic and homoerotic. Can I ask you before any of that, what about the part where he addresses the congregation who's like, you always lying, Perry Stone. It's like, so people in your congregation are like, you're a fucking liar? It's like, because that would really equal what we're yeah. hearing and well, everyone was agreeing with him in the congregation which means he's told this story many a times before and yeah. well in the words of the preacher quote people just trip me out people quote. trip me out which also leads me to was this guy on lsd maybe like, yeah probably he might be why would I you mean, put this obviously, on youtube obviously obviously he fucked a demon what? i mean there was a demon in his bed <laughs> and he reached over thinking it was his wife it was a demon. Can and we talk about this It was a this demon that quick? looked just like his wife's lover. His <laughs> wife has been going with a family member because of a problem with her daughter that she's taken responsibility for and been vacationing, finds guy, uses a coded cell phone to fuck said guy. Fuck said guy is like, I've been married four times. That's my baby. Knows she's pregnant without just like skipping every detail possible where it's like, why would he know that? And- there's implications here already of her conviction towards being pro-life. Kevin, wait, 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 wait. Said guy, the the affair guy, wants 
to keep the baby or her husband wants to keep f- the baby? Uh, both said it's okay. Well, okay, that's a good question. Because I thought it husband was her husband. Said, it is a hard story to follow. I, I've storyboarded this many times. Husband says everything's okay. Come back. Like, bring the demon baby. Demon guy's like, I'm going to fucking find you. That's my baby. Oh, see, I thought that was her husband who said that. Which brings me to my next point. I'm already I'm over so it. Confused. <laughs> yep. This is I, the most convoluted. I no longer care. I'm going to play the rest and we'll get to where we're going. Now, what do you do? So the only thing she felt she could do was separate from her husband, whom she loved. Believe it or not. Not biased. Yes. Believe it or not, women can love. And leave the family and lose the ministry. Have this infant. Now, let me just say since that time which has been 16 17 years ago or so Ooh. longer maybe now she's been restored back you know she's all, she told me she says in all this clutter of junk she says the weirdest thing is i never lost my love for god i never lost my faith in god i lost confidence in me but she says here i am living this life and then I'd get up and go and walk and pray and fast, living this life. She says it was hell. Hell, 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 like nobody can ever imagine. Now, give me a second here. No. She was set up by a demon. <laughs> There's no question about it. She was set up by someone who'd been to a psychic, working through a familiar spirit. And this person that she connected with, how many of you know when the Bible says when two people have relations, they become one flesh? So when she had, and this is going to get deep, folks, when she had the relations with this man and his seed was placed in her body, she joined her spirit to his spirit. So the demonic power working through this man, he wasn't a Christian, but the demonic power working through this man then works against her. That's not that she's becoming possessed by a demon but she's being manipulated by a spirit. Can anybody get this? Because there's a difference between no. being possessed, no. because when you're possessed, you have no control. And you're violent, and you're cutting yourself, and you're screaming, and you're tormented. But she's becoming manipulated mentally and emotionally by a spirit. Oh, Lord, I, f- I feel God's about to do something in this place, so help me. I that wrote. is Perry Stone Ministries, 2016, preaching about sex and sex education. He, I assume, did the condom portion before he talked about how a sex demon is going to impregnate you and haunt you for the rest of your life. Right. While also delegitimizing spirits and saying that they're not real, and um, but also a but w- this woman, their creature, so real at the same time. Apparently, they become intermingled if you have sex with somebody. Right. Exactly. Which, by the way, is he suggesting he believes in the paranormal? To me, it sounds like that. Exactly that, Kevin. Kind of. You, I mean, I, I, I have no words right now. Perry Stone <laughs> Ministries, you can find them on the interwebs. They have plenty more to choose from. Or don't. From. Tune in next time for the moment you've all been waiting for. We host an orgy. In the meantime, five stars on wherever you're watching. Hit us with a subscribe. If it's Spotify, we see you. We love you from around the world. We appreciate the questions. We will get back to you very shortly. We will be at a live conference very soon. We can't wait to interact more with our audience. We'll see you next time.